Greetings guys, girls, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. As so many of my videos start, the other day I was scrolling on Twitter because that is where I live. Um, and I came across someone who had quote retweeted a post from this account called the feminist turned housewife. And obviously I saw this and was like, this came to me on my timeline for a reason. And that reason is to sit down and make a video about it. So today we are going to be having a look at this Twitter account called The Feminist Turned Housewife because this is supposedly the wife of another Twitter user that I made a video about recently, which was the art of creation. And I say supposedly, because like, I would not be surprised like at all if this was just run by the same person just pretending to be his wife. Like the, the bio reads, former atheist feminist saved by the grace of God, wife and mother of three, all opinions are my husband's. And they have one subscription, which is to her husband's account. And that's the funniest thing ever to me because the post layouts are quite similar. Obviously it's because these are all his opinions, but like wouldn't be surprised if this whole account was his. The difference is that these are longer, like more words are said in the posts and it's just interesting. And so that's what we're doing today. We're having a look through this account at someone who's totally not the art of creation, but actually his wife, seeing what she has to say. But before we get into it, I would like to say a massive thank you to today's patron of the day, Kylie. I appreciate you and your support so much. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you enjoy this video. And if anyone else would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvy cat or click the top link in the description. It starts at as little as one pound a month and I appreciate it greatly. Let's dive into this nightmare. This account tweets like, multiple times a day, by the way, they are, they just live on Twitter more than I do. And I didn't even think that was possible. The way these tweets are formatted is so funny to me because they are obviously a verified account because why wouldn't you pay Elon Musk $8 a month to be able to write long tweets? And so they tweet like a lot of text and then just use like an old painting of a woman as a photo because every tweet needs a photo obviously. And I find that really strange, but that's pretty much how all of these tweets go. Um, which in my opinion, if a tweet is more than the 240 limit, it's not a tweet anymore. That's, that's just not a tweet. But alas, here we are, long tweets, let's go. Giving men commitment-free sex is the worst idea anyone has ever come up with. Imagine thinking it's a win, that it's owning the patriarchy, to go and give degenerate men exactly what they want consequence-free access to your body. We have all been fooled. I too was fooled by this nonsense, that it empowered me and liberated me to be able to engage in a sex like a man. Casual sex is soul crushing to any woman and it's never worth it. There is always regret and emptiness after. It will never bring you the comfort and bonding you want and crave. This is the heavy price of the lies of sexual liberation. You pay with your body and you pay with your soul. I find it so interesting. When, and she says this in a lot of her tweets that are about purity, um, we're just gonna focus in on be able to engage in sex like a man and casual sex is soul crushing to any woman. So implying that casual sex is something that is enjoyable for men and encouraged for men, but something that women shouldn't do. So, gay? Question mark? <laughs> That's the only solution here. And these people are vocally pro-traditional marriage and like anti-queer. So I don't really know what the solution here is. Men are allowed to be promiscuous and they're allowed to have casual sex. It's something that they enjoy. But they're not allowed to be gay though. And women aren't allowed to have sex. So what, who, hmm. So what's the, what's the solution here then? I really would like to hear a solution that you have for this problem of men needing casual sex, but women not allowed to have casual sex, but also no gay. Also love speaking on behalf of all women here. 
um, that we've been fooled into thinking that casual sex is empowering, but it is actually soul crushing. Speak for yourself. It's not soul crushing for everyone. Not everyone is looking for something deeper than casual sex. And like casual sex isn't fulfilling to all men either. Like casual sex is not something that a lot of people enjoy. It is something that some people do and some people don't. And it's not gendered at all. And it can be empowering to take control of your body and to decide what to do with your body. That is what's empowering about it. It's about being able to choose what happens to your body and when. That is empowering. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, it might not be to everyone, but it is for a lot of people. And like, just let people have that, you know? If sex is something that someone finds empowering, go for it. This one actually has a two by two like photo that says, this is what purpose looks like. Oil paintings or generated oil paintings. I don't know if they're real paintings or not of women holding babies. So, and the caption is stop believing the feminist lies. Women have been lied to for decades and that's why they are so unhappy. Women want men. They want husbands. Women want homes. They want children and babies. This is the truth. Stop denying your womanhood, accept it and free yourself. No one's saying that women don't want the those things. It's just saying that women don't have to have those things. Women can have those things. Women can want those things. Women can have and want those things and also want a career and also want this and also want that. People are allowed to want multiple things. People are allowed to have multiple things. Not everyone wants to be a mother. Not everyone has to be a mother, but some people want to be and that's okay. The whole thing is about choice. <laughs> so some people, being a parent is not their purpose in life. That's not something that's going to be fulfilling. And I think that we should stop trying to force parenthood on people who wouldn't make good parents. I think that we should actually be encouraging having kids less. I don't think the norm should be having kids because so many people have kids who should not be parents. And societal pressure about what being a woman looks like, being like, you have to have kids, that's what you do next. Uh, really doesn't help that. Having kids is not for everyone, please. Speaking of feminism being a choice, she's reading my mind about what I'm about to say. Feminism isn't about choice. If a woman truly is a feminist, she cannot be a housewife and she cannot endorse or support other women to be housewives either. It is logically contradictory. Here is why. First, under feminist framing, women being at home makes men more sexist because they see women as nothing more than moms. Men with stay-at-home wives are more sexist than ones with working wives. I mean, those are your words, not mine. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you can have a very functional, healthy, equal balance, like stay-at-home mom and working husband. Like that can work, especially if the relationship starts as like both parents working and then you have kids and then one of the parents stop working to take on that role. Like it can work and it can be fine and it doesn't necessarily mean there's more misogyny in the relationship. As long as you respect being a stay at home mother as like an actual job that is important and you don't treat your wife like a slave, you're good, you're fine. Second, since feminism champions women's independence, there is nothing that is more not independent than a woman who depends on her husband. This is not acceptable. There is nothing that is more not independent. I feel like more not independent, like I get what they're trying to say, but I feel like there is nothing less independent would have been the correct way to put that. But anyway, that aside. So women can't be house, Feminists can't be housewives because they're not allowed to be dependent on their husbands. You are allowed to be a one income household. You're allowed to be a stay at home mom if that's what you like. However, and I talked about this in a video recently, you should also have qualifications and job experience, etc. So that if the marriage does end or if you need extra money, etc., you have that option. If you need to leave the relationship, you have a way to get out and gain financial independence if you need to. But you are allowed to give that up to be in a relationship if that is the dynamic that you want. Like, I'm not gonna stop you. Just make sure you have other things as well. You shouldn't be completely dependent on someone because that is setting yourself up to be 
in a situation that you can't leave from. Third, women who stay home are catering to patriarchy prescribed gender roles and norms. Under feminism, this is not acceptable. This is the most wrong one so far. You're allowed to, you're allowed to be as feminine or unfeminine as you fucking like. If you love cooking and cleaning and dresses and the color pink, etc., etc., then by all means, fucking go ahead. Follow gender norms, do whatever you want. As long as you're also like getting help from your partner if you need it. It's about respect. That's the thing. That's where the line is, is that like being a housewife, stay at home mom, whatever the term is, is fine as long as your partner respects you and treats you like a person and not as an object or like a slave or a servant, you know? That's where the problem comes in. Fourth. Women who decide not to join the workforce stand in the way of gender equality and make things harder for all women as a whole. The more women drop from the workforce, the more employers see women as a risky investment and the fewer women in the workplace, the more male dominated it becomes. Under feminism, this is unacceptable as both situations make women unequal. You just said a lot of words there that I don't think I've ever heard anyone actually say. <laughs> All women have to work so that there are more women in the workforce. And if not all women are working, then the workforce is unequal and therefore unfeminist. I mean, I think I get what you were trying to say there, but like, no. <laughs> like there's a lot of like unemployed people who are all trying to look for work of like both genders. There are a lot of fields that have like large gender divides, etc. Like. It's about having the right proportion and like equal employment of genders is important within workplaces or at least getting more balanced is important. Like I get being like, if women don't work, then there can't be true gender equality in the workplace. I mean, true, but the thing is, is that most women do want to work. <laughs> That's the thing is most women are making the choice to work. And so there should be, that gender balance that exists in the workplace, but I'm not holding that against the women who are choosing not to work. Feminism cannot and does not allow for women to make choices. It's a lie, it's deception. Feminism is incompatible with women deciding to stay home and raise children. If you are a feminist who stays home, just know your choice is not accepted or appreciated. The very core of feminism has always been the absolute disdain for stay at home women. They have always been called a parasite. They have always been disrespected because feminism isn't about choice, it's about destruction of the home and all that is inherently female. I mean, I've already said what I need to say about this, but like, think what you want. Um, but you're the one trying to take away choices here by saying that women shouldn't work. So <laughs> feminists, capitalism is evil. Also feminists, you only have worth if you produce capital. No, <laughs> no one is saying that. No one is saying that a woman is worthless if she doesn't have a job. And also those aren't the same thing either because like capitalism is bad but we still all exist under capitalism you know <laughs> you know what i mean like these aren't even the same statement no one is worthless regardless of their employment status that doesn't that doesn't matter you don't have to have a job to have worth that is a problem with capitalism is that we are all told that our worth is dependent on how much money we produce and how much we fuel the economy and how hard we work, etc., etc. We're not saying that. Um, we're saying that it's cool if you are able to have a high paying job, high up job, etc., because that is rare. It doesn't change your worth. It's just fucking cool to see because a lot of women work really hard and aren't rewarded for it. So it's great to see when women are rewarded for it. Everyone, regardless of gender, is worth more than any job because jobs don't define you. How much money you make does not define you unless you're a billionaire and then it does define you and it defines you as on the dinner menu. The only real choice feminism put on the table was the choice to be a whore and not be shamed. I never was shamed when I engaged in premarital sex and neither were my friends. Only those who waited and had higher moral standards regarding sexual intimacy were shamed. I mean, good for you if you were never shamed. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what, this is so ironic though, because you're like, we were never shamed for having sex, uh, but you are on the internet right now 
shaming everyone for having premarital sex. I'm glad you were in an environment where you weren't shamed for that. I'm sorry that your friends or the people around you who are saving sex for marriage were getting shamed. I don't think that deserves shame. I understand people asking questions about it. Like personally, it's not something I entirely understand, but that's just because I also don't really see the value of marriage itself. I think that like a long-term relationship is just as meaningful and you shouldn't get married just to have sex. Like save sex until you're with someone whom you feel comfortable with and love and want to be with for a long time. Sure, fine, go off, good for you. I respect that. But like, yeah, no one should be shamed for any choice that they're making. And to say that people don't get slut shamed while you're actively slut shaming is absolutely fucking hilarious. I see people slut shamed every fucking day. So you're living in a bubble. <laughs> you are absolutely living in a bubble. If men are so dangerous, why do feminists promote drinking, going out, partying, and casual sex with them? How does it add that men can't be trusted, but also you should be sexually promiscuous with them? How can they say they care for the safety of women when they say it's perfectly fine to put yourself in the most vulnerable of positions with a man you don't know that has no commitment towards you? If feminists cared about you, they would tell you to wait to have sex, to not put yourself in dangerous situations, to be aware and able to discern moral men from immoral men, not tell you all men are bad, but also continue to promote risky behavior. Feminism is evil and it doesn't care about you. Here we go back to the choice thing again. Feminism, <laughs> feminism is not encouraging women to go out drinking and partying and having casual sex. Feminism is about doing what you want and just enjoying your life. And to put this back and say it's feminism's fault that women are being sexually assaulted and sexually abused because we're encouraging people to have casual sex is so, so victim blamey. It's not fucking feminists fault that men take advantage of women. It's not the like my fault if I decided to like go home with someone and they decided to take advantage of me. That is their fault, not mine. That is not my fault at all. They shouldn't do that. <laughs> if I'm out drinking and someone harasses me or touches me inappropriately, etc. That's their fault, it has nothing to do with me. Trying to pin that on me and be like, well, maybe you should take more precautions. Maybe he shouldn't fucking touch me. That's not on me, that's not on feminism, that's on men. And part of feminism is trying to prevent that from happening by educating men about consent, by getting more strict with like, laws by trying to make places more safe. That That's what it's about. It's about providing women with choices and making places more safe. And no one is encouraging people to go out and get drunk and hook up. That's just something that you can do. But everyone is encouraged to be safe, yeah? I'm, I'm gonna promote safety first. We have so many rules in place of like, if you're going on a first date, meet somewhere public. And if you're going home with someone, text a friend an address, send them your location. Tell the person you're going home with that you've sent your friend where you're going. Be like, what's your address? I'm gonna send it to my friend. Make sure they know that you're with someone. Make sure that they know that someone knows where you are. <laughs> like there is a bunch of safety precautions to take. If you're gonna like go home with someone and have a one night stand and you are a woman, take them to your place instead of going to theirs. Especially if you have like roommates, that's even better. Like, you know, there are precautions to take. There are safety measures in place. There are lots of things you can do to keep yourself as safe as possible. No one is encouraging going out and making dangerous decisions. And we certainly are not trying to blame women for getting assaulted or getting hurt because it's not women's fault. We should be allowed and able to go out and enjoy ourselves without being afraid of being hurt because that's not our fault. It is never the victim's fault. I miss when live concerts used to be tasteful and performance was an art. Now I can't even tell if I'm looking at a strip show or a concert. What concerts are you going to? <laughs> I'm so baffled. Like everyone does concerts. And most concerts aren't strip shows. Like what concerts are you going to? I went to a concert last night. I went to the Ray concert, which was 
fucking phenomenal. Holy shit. I'm like, I lost my mind. I sobbed my heart out. And that was her on a stage with a full symphony orchestra in like a long black dress, just fucking singing her heart out. And it was phenomenal. It was beautiful. It was fucking fantastic. She, I only discovered her a few weeks ago and she's like one of my favorite artists of all time with like some of my favorite songs ever. Anyway, that's an example of a concert I went to recently. And then all the other concerts I've gone to recently have also been not really provocative at all. It's been just a bunch of K-pop concerts and things. <laughs> and that's just like people like dancing and singing. And I'm just so confused as to how you're looking at every single concert and being like, all they're doing is stripping and like being provocative. And I can't even tell if I'm watching a performance. What happened to like, performance and art. Maybe listen to different artists. Like, <laughs> what artists are you listening to? What concerts are you going to? Go to concerts with artists that you enjoy. Like, if you don't want to see people like twerking and like wearing minimal clothing, like don't go to a fucking Cardi B concert. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Don't, <laughs> don't go to like a Miley Cyrus concert, if that's not your vibe. D just avoid those concerts. Maybe go to concerts of artists that you enjoy and want to see because like there are fucking gospel artists that do concerts. There are country artists that do concerts. There are Christian conservative artists that do concerts. So literally, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like not very many concerts are you going to ever be confused with the strip show. No concerts really should you be confused with a strip show. But like, in terms of that sort of vibe of what I'm assuming you're talking about, you're completely, completely over-exaggerating. I would much rather go back to the days where men looked at women as baby makers and homemakers rather than now, a time when they look at women like they are nothing more than a body to have sex with. I think you'll find that that was more true before. Seeing women as homemakers and baby makers, that was them seeing women as objects and people to have sex with. <laughs> That's, that was a time when like marital rape wasn't, wasn't a thing. Like no one talked about that. Uh, it didn't count and you were allowed to do that. Women weren't allowed to deny their husbands of sex like ever, or it could result in being like literally physically beaten and that was totally fine. Like that was chill, that was normal. I would class that as a much more harmful thing. Men have been viewing women as like objects and like sex objects for a very, very, very long time. And it used to be women are to be seen and not heard. Women and children to be seen and not heard. That's how it was for a really long time. Women have always been seen as just like servants and people to serve their husbands, and that includes sexually. Pretty outlandish to make this statement here. There are a lot more healthy relationships now in which there is more equal ground in relationships where men do not view women as sexual objects. They view their partners as an equal. The best type of relationship are the relationships where you view each other as equals. That's not viewing your partner as a baby maker, which is fucked and objectifying, but it's viewing your partner as a human, you know? I don't want to live in a time where men view me as an object in any way, <laughs> at all. Even if, hypothetically, the time when they viewed women as baby makers and housekeepers, um, they weren't viewing us as sex objects, but still viewing us as objects. I just personally, don't want to be viewed as an object. I want to be viewed as a person. So I'd like to live in a time where men look at me and see me as an equal, as a human being. That's, that's how I want to live. I don't want them to see me as a homemaker or a baby maker or an object of any kind. You'll constantly hear about how women have progressed, that we have gained so much and have come so far. But have we really? More women than ever before are now single and childless. More women than ever before are on SSRIs. More women than ever before are divorced. 
More women than ever before are working out of their homes. More children than ever are being raised by strangers and not their own mothers. More women than ever are on birth control, using abortion, and hating their fertility. More women than ever are promiscuous and immodest. More women than ever have STDs. How is this progress? How is this a win? Feminism hasn't been a progress. It hasn't been freedom or liberation. It's been oppression. It's been the destruction of womanhood. How long have SSRIs been around for? That's my first question. Let's see. The invention of SSRIs. 1974. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> obviously now there are more women on SSRIs. There are also more men on SSRIs. There are more everyone on SSRIs because they are more normal now. They're actually like something that we know a bit about and are being prescribed more. So that makes sense. And I think you can't just be looking at women specifically but just everyone as a whole. Um, and the fact that we just kind of live in a time where like, yeah, people are fucking depressed right now, but that's, <laughs> that's not got anything to do with fucking feminism. And it's so funny because like a lot of the issues that like these all talk about, it comes down to like capitalism in a lot of ways, right? Like more women than ever are single and childless. Well, for one, a lot of people have to be childless because do you know how fucking expensive it is to have a kid. People can't afford that. And also we have to work so much that there's no time to form relationships. So you can't get into relationships. You can't have kids because you can't afford it and you don't have the time to do it. So like people, it's not a priority because people have to work so much that there's just not time to build relationships. And also not everyone finds them fulfilling. That is another factor too, obviously but we have to take into consideration that we just don't have the time to form relationships anymore. Uh, more women than ever are divorced. That's a good thing, because it means that people can leave relationships if they need to and they aren't happy. I think that the divorce rate being up is a good thing. I think if we want the divorce rate to come down, the best way to do it is to just stop getting married. But you know, I don't really care that much about the divorce rate. More children are being raised by strangers than their own mothers. Um, again, capitalism, you know? A lot of women would love to be able to spend more time with their kids. A lot of men would love to be able to spend more time with their kids. Parents in general should be able to spend more time with their kids. But unfortunately, that's not something that is given. It's wild to me seeing like TikToks of parents in the States, like having to take their like literal, like infant babies to daycare after like 10 weeks so that they can go to work. Like that's so sad and astounding to me. I didn't realize that that was a thing you had to do. Like the fact that there's no paid time off and like the US is very Christian too. It's like 60% of the country is Christian and it's like a very conservative country in a lot of ways. Like all of your fucking political candidates are conservatives. Like there's not really any wiggle room at all, but it's so capitalistic that like, even though so much of the country is like, you have to have a traditional family, you have to get married, you have to have kids. They're also not willing to let you actually raise your kids or spend time with them. I think that paid parental leave is incredibly important. And I think that all parents should get it regardless of what gender they are. And again, that's a capitalism problem, not a feminist problem. More women than ever on birth control using abortion and hitting their fertility. I think that using birth control and having abortion, right? In order to have less abortions, more people have to use birth control. I don't understand people's problem with birth control. I really, really don't get it. You don't want the abortion rate to be high, but you also don't want people to prevent pregnancies. And you also supposedly care about children, but you're encouraging everyone to have children, even if they can't afford to and can't give them a good life. Like make it make sense. Birth control is good. More people should be on birth control. That's just, that is that is actually a positive thing. And more women than ever have STDs. We need better sex education. That's really the answer to that one. We need better, more comprehensive sex education in schools because a lot of schools don't have good comprehensive sex education. So give that and then that will solve that problem. There we go. I, I answered all of these, I think. Okay, I'm gonna do one last one. You do not need a fancy job, a career, an education, fancy goals, and non-ending list of achievements besides just being a mother and wife. If that is all you wish to do and accomplish, those are wonderful, selfless, most important things. You absolutely should have qualifications <laughs> and 
job experience and a support network at any given point. You should not be going into a relationship and getting married if you don't have any way to provide for yourself should the marriage end, because that is going to leave you in a potentially very bad situation. I know it's like, you wanna be hopeful and you don't wanna think about the fact that the marriage could end, but you have to be practical. You have to prepare for every situation. And that includes being prepared for the marriage to end. And that means you have to know how to be independent. If you do wanna just be a mother and a wife, fine, but make sure you have a backup as well. Anyway, I think I'm gonna end this video here. I think I said the same thing a bunch of times. So I apologize about that. Um, but also I'm not meant to be apologizing. So I take it back. I don't apologize. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed regardless. I hope that you did enjoy this video. Um, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. I appreciate you greatly. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Danielle, Raven, Elias, Chris, Samuel, and Knitting Menace. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to be on Patreon, you go to patreon.com slash savvycat. Click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. When you close your eyes.